What is up guys? Welcome back to the shop once again. Today we have another 5.0 video where we're going to tackle the most common coolant leak on the 5.0 and that is the coolant Y pipe which is right on top and it leaks from the uh, quick connect on this side that goes into the thermostat housing and also on this side where the upper radiator hose clips into it. So there's a revised part out for this and this leak affects the 2011 through 2021 F-150s, uses the same part. Now some of the 5.0s with different inverters, I guess, on the 5.0 and the 2021 models uh, use some different upper radiator hose and connections, but uh, some are still out there that use this exact Y pipe on here. So we're gonna show you how to change it out today. So this comes all together. It's all inclusive, clamps, quick connect, O-ring, everything. On this side, for the upper radiator hose side, you can either, either replace the whole hose or they actually sell the O-ring for it. So on this one, I was seeing some crusties on here uh, around the molded connection, so I went ahead and changed the entire hose out. Uh, but you can just buy the O-ring and fix that part of it and swap this out and you'll fix all your coolant leaks on here. So today we're gonna go ahead and walk you through it from start to finish. I'll list all the parts and everything you need down below, including the new yellow PO coolant that you wanna have for this job going back together. Let's get started. All right, so looking underneath the vehicle here in the front, you come underneath the air dam there, and you can look straight up at all the hoses right here to see which ones are leaking. Like I said, the one right here, that Y connector, you see there's two quick connects right there? That's where it's gonna leak. So this one's not actively leaking all over the belt or anything like that, uh, but you can see it's seeping out of there under high pressures, maybe during the summertime, uh, and it's leaving the white traces behind. It's very evident on there. So what I usually do is change the upper radiator hose with that Y connector, and that takes care of all the quick connects, and you can see the rest of them have good old style clamps on them, and guess what? No leaks. So we're just gonna concentrate on this part right here, and get it taken care of it's pretty quick easy job all right let's get down to it so starting off with a cool engine you want to remove your radiator cap top side to vent the cooling system then we're going to come down here with our drain pan under the passenger front frame rail and we're going to look for the radiator drain what you're looking for is this little red knob right here all right so right in the center is a slot for a flat blade screwdriver go ahead and turn it counterclockwise because start draining the coolant out now, that little nipple that comes out of there, it's going to drain right onto the frame rail and make a huge mess. So what I do is I'll stick a 5 16 line on there, bring that line down to our drain bucket, and that way you avoid a big mess draining the cooling system out of here. So go ahead and start draining the cooling system. Then we'll go up top side and start removing uh, some components to gain access to that Y connector. All right, now that the cooling system is draining, we can go ahead and come back up top here and start removing a few items so we have access to that Y connector, which is a little buried right there, but it's not too bad. It's right up top. So the 11 through 14 models, the engine compartments can look just like this, okay? 15 through 20 are, are similar, but of course there's gonna be a degas bottle right here. Small changes, but otherwise, it's all the same, all right? So what we need to do is get this air intake right here out of the way so you're going to loosen the eight mil clamp right there one right there we're going to remove any aspirator lines like this one right here they just simply push on get them out of the way same thing there's gonna be a fresh air inlet for the pcv system all right pull back on that and then you pull right off like that and get that out of the way all right there we go and then we'll get this up and out of the way also. Once all those items are out of the way, you're gonna see the Y connector right there. But we also need to remove um, this line right here for the canister perch. It's gonna be in our way from getting to the clamp right there for the hose. So what you wanna do is come in on each side. I use a cat claw, I come underneath here, all right? You see those little green ears sticking down there? We're gonna squeeze in and pop up on both sides, okay? At the same time, and that'll pop up, and this line will slide right off. We get that line out of the way, all right? And it's gonna open up big time, so we have access to upper hose, and of course, that Y connector. All right, so this vehicle looks a little bit different because uh, the next few clips of this repair actually came out garbled in the audio. So uh, this one is a 2011, and then we're gonna jump back to the other one, which is a newer model. 
So the very next thing we're gonna do now that the air intake snorkel is off of here and we have tons of room, like you see here, uh, is we're going to actually remove the throttle body. What you're gonna do is you're gonna remove each one of these bolts, there's four of them, all right? We're gonna leave it connected and we're gonna take the bolts out and we're just gonna flop it over to the side. Okay, get it out of the way. That's gonna make it a lot easier to get to this Y pipe and slide it off the thermostat housing here, all right? So basically what we're gonna do now is pull the throttle body and then we can go after the Y pipe. Before you get to the Y pipe, because there's gonna be residual coolant leaking out of there, what you wanna do is come down and zoom out a little bit, is you want to remove your serpentine belts, okay? So for the main drive belt, just about all the model years, you're gonna have a main drive belt here in the front and there's gonna be a tensioner right here, you see it? That bolt right there, a 15 mil bolt, you wanna turn it counterclockwise and that's gonna release tension, you can pop the belt off of there. Now, some of the early models, like the 11 50s, the early models, uh, they have stretch belts. Some of the later ones do um, on here. For those ones, you can't pull the belt without actually cutting it and pulling it off. So with that one, you would just you know cover with a plastic bag. Uh, but this one, as you can see for the AC belt, uh, it does have a tensioner. So we're gonna go ahead and take that belt off there too. Because there's going to be some bits of coolant still coming out of there pulling this Y-pipe. So this is the Y-pipe we're actually changing out on there. Uh, and this connection right here, going to the upper radiator hose, uh, leaks often enough, uh, but also over here where it quick connects to the thermostat housing, it leaks there too. So we're gonna take care of both of these uh, by changing this out here today. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna get the belts off of there and everything like that. I'm gonna get the throttle body out of here and then we can go after the three connections for this Y-pipe and we'll start getting it off of there. Okay, now with the throttle body out of the way, you see there's tons of room around the Y-pipe. We have our belts off, and we have some paper towels stuffed underneath the Y-pipe connection right here. If we're gonna get any kind of coolant loss, it's gonna be at this connection here and over here. So just have the rag there to catch any kind of coolant. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these spring lock fasteners on here, uh, these clips. So there's one here and here, and then up here at the hose is a regular constant tension clamp. So the way you get these off of here is you simply take a pick like this and you get in here and hopefully you guys can see everything. Basically you hook underneath there and you get in there and it'll pull out and then you get to take it out the rest of the way with your hand, all right? So we're gonna kind of work our way on this side too. And we're gonna be extra gentle with this one because this, this upper radiator hose, we're gonna be reusing this clip. So you don't wanna bend it and distort it in any way. So this one just kind of works its way off of there. And it looks like that, all right? So save this one and put it off to the side. So like I said, you don't need to replace the upper radiator hose on the 11 through 20s, uh, but you must replace the O-ring that's inside of there. And I'll show you how that looks. So it's an ultra supple O-ring that goes on the inside of the pipe on there. So 11 through 20 models are all the same. 21, it gets a little funky. Uh, but there's one variation that does still use that. All right, so here we go. We're gonna pull off this connection first. We're gonna have our rags ready. And we're gonna wiggle it just a little bit. Remember, it locks in. There's, there's like a, a, a channel, a guide in there uh, that locks it a certain way. So you can't twist it off there. You could twist it just a little bit though and wiggle it like that. All right. Now this upper radiator hose is gonna be full of coolant. Think about the downward droop on here, all right? So be ready for it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our paper towel in there. We're gonna clean it out and we're gonna pick out that O-ring in there. So the O-ring is gonna be right here. It doesn't look like it, but that's the O-ring. You see how flat it is? Yeah, they get distorted after a while and there it goes, out the wheel well. Cool, right to the ground, that's perfect. All right, so then we're gonna take some paper towels. We're gonna clean this general area right here Shouldn't be too bad, it's inside the cooling system. Just dirt out of here and stuff like that. Okay, and again, remember, while you're doing this, watch out, it's full of coolant in there. All right, then we're gonna take our new ultra supple O-ring, and again, I'll link to all these parts down below. We're gonna take it and we're gonna pop it inside that same channel inside of there, all right? And it does take a little bit of skill to do this, but you can just do it by hand. And basically you get started like that, hold it, and then you go like this with your fingers, and you work it around. 
inside of there. Oh boy, this thing is full. So once you get it down inside the groove, all the way around, it'll sit in there perfect. You just make sure all the way around that's in the groove. And any kind of coolant that was inside of that, that's on your finger, will actually lubricate it. All right, so this is good to go. Let's go ahead and put our spring lock right back onto there. Same way, goes in like that, in the bottom, all the way in. So it looks like that on both sides. Okay, it's flush, sub flush actually. And this is good to go. This is all repaired and ready to go back together once the white pipe is changed out. So go ahead and put this off this side, up and out of the way, so it does not leak any of the coolant. All right, not so bad, not so bad. So next, we are going to do the same thing with that spring lock um, down here, where the Y pipe connects to the, the thermostat housing. And you really need to have a pick to get in here. You can use a small flat blade screwdriver, you know, but you really want to have a pick. So once you get it down, again, far enough, that one can go down and away. Doesn't matter because it comes on the new Y pipe. All right. So we can't just go ahead and manhandle and pull that out. There's too much rigidity right here with this hose, especially the older ones. They get hard. Okay. So we're going to take the spring clamp off next, that the uh, constant tension clamp. So it's a regular constant tension clamp. So use a regular, you know, channel locks or slip joint pliers like you see here and we're just gonna release it far enough it's a doozy I get it free from the rubber on there there we go it gets stuck to the rubber over the years it's a big clamp look at that sucker so we're gonna get it far enough like you see there, right? So it's down and out of the way. And over here, there's a metal water neck, okay? So at this point, you can try to wiggle it off of there, but a lot of them, like I said, it's gonna be rigid because the rubber gets hard with the heat cycles um, and it's gonna be hard to get off of there. So what I do is I'll take a razor blade, nice new razor blade, and I'll make a slit in the top of it to release that pressure on there. I'll spread it out. At that point, it's free of the water neck. We can just wiggle it off the thermostat housing over here. All right. Just need to be careful. You don't want to be too aggressive with your razor blade because you'll score the neck, the metal water neck on there. So you can tell once you get so far down, like you know you're getting past the rubber. You're getting close to that metal now, and you can, uh, you know, kind of slow down and be a little easier on it. So once it's split, or you think it's split, and you can see it doesn't take too much, the whole thing is kind of like spread open now, over here, all right? So let's get our... rags back over here. All right, now... With this spread over here, we can pull this way. And over here, of course, our spring lock is disconnected. See, a little wiggle and pull. And there it goes. Might be some coolant in there. Usually it's that first connection that really has all the coolant uh, drainage. So you can see right there, when I slid it, I actually slid it and I got my cat claw in there and spread it away because the rubber likes to stick uh, to the water neck on there. And then I have the ability to move it a little bit and we pulled it right off this side. All right. So the new uh, Y pipe comes complete with this uh, constant tension clamp, your spring lock and new O-ring. Everything's all built inside of here. All right. So now it's time to clean up. That's, that's really all there is to it. All right. But we're going to have a little bit of corrosion over here on this side and on this side. So we're going to take just a scotch right on there. And there we get that off of there. And we're gonna clean up the surface. All right. So right here, I'll kind of show you. I know you can't see it because this hose is in the way. Uh, I'll bring you around here. 
And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean that ceiling surface on there and get that light corrosion off of it so the new Y pipe can actually seal and it's a good repair in the end. Just a lot of like light corrosion. You don't need to go too far down the neck on here because remember the ceiling surface is, you know, towards the top of the nipple. All right, let's try to keep any kind of debris out of there. You see there's a high spot right here. Stuff like that. There we go. And then we'll just use some brake clean and a rag and we'll clean it afterwards. So it's all good to go. Okay, now that the Y connector is off of there, everything's all cleaned up and good to go. We can go ahead and start cleaning up the engine compartment a little bit. Get our rags to be stuffed down in here out of the way. Uh, any coolant that might have spilled, clips, pieces of hoses, stuff like that. Make sure it's all cleaned up in there, ready for the new pieces. Uh, you can even start uh, installing the new the belt back on, new belts or the original belts, because at this point, we're not going to have any more coolant leakage. Uh, so we can get the belt back on, get it all back together. And if you're so inclined, you can go ahead and, and clean the throttle body too. Uh, you can see this one's pretty bad. Most of them are. A lot of oil and varnish on them and stuff like that. I have a whole video on how to do that safely when it comes to electronic throttle bodies, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put all this back together. And then once the part arrives, we'll come back together and we'll show you how to slip that piece onto there without damaging the O-rings. Okay, now it's time to start putting things back together. So both of our connections are clean and ready to go for the new Y-pipe. We cleaned up the engine compartment from any coolant and clips and hoses that may have fallen down in there. Went ahead and put our drive belts back on because we're not leaking any more coolant at this point. Went ahead and closed the radiator drain so we're done there. And we can start putting the new Y-pipe onto there. So here's the new Y-pipe from the factory, all right? So it comes just like this, molded connections, quick connects, and constant tension clamp and all. So I'll put a little bit of lubricant on this side for the upper radiator hose connection. On this side right here in the quick connect side, the spring lock and new O-ring is lubricated inside of there from the factory ready to go. And we have our new constant tension clamp in the perfect orientation, locked and ready to pop, all right? So we'll go ahead and we'll get the, the rags out of the throttle body opening here just so we have a little more room because it's going to be a little bit difficult getting it in here. As you can imagine, it's a 90 degree connection on there. So the key to getting this on there without damaging anything is, of course, I lubricate the inside of this hose so that it makes it easier sliding as far on as possible to this neck right here. All right. So I use some clean coolant on the inside there. And this is the trick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hose, we're gonna stick it on the neck as far as possible, and then we're gonna tweak and, and get this quick connect over the nipple in the thermostat housing, and then snap it in place. Once it's snapped in place and the orientation is correct, on both sides, we'll go ahead and we'll pop that spring lock on there. It's that simple. But this is the key to it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get it all the way on there, as far as you can go. It's really going to help be lubricated. And then down here, this hose has some flex in it. We're going to take it and we're going to get it on there. So we're on the nipple right now. So we're going to get it straight and we're going to get locked onto here. And this will orientate the rest of the hose here. So it'll go on that easy, just like that. Okay. It'll come past it'll, the, the spring will come out and then it'll pop on the other side, give it a little tug, we're good to go. This thing is set. So over here on that spring lock and that constant tension clamp, we're gonna go ahead and pop that. I know you can't see this, but you guys get the point. Let's look at this back out of the way. So this constant tension clamp is in the perfect orientation already. All you gotta do is pop it. So the way you pop it is you simply squeeze it a little bit Twist it a little bit, and it'll pop. Just like that. And then mine moved a little bit, so I'll take it, and I'll straighten it back up, just so it's perfectly on there. There we go. All right, so we have this connection over here, the spring lock done, over here is done. We can go ahead and put our throttle body back on. I clean mine up for the this customer 
Make sure your seal's in place. Go ahead and get our bolts back in here. I always start with the top because they're easiest to find and align with the top of the, the inserts there on the intake. Make sure your connection's back on for the throttle body if you took it off to clean it. Go ahead and get all this back on here. And make sure you turn these in by hand because you don't want anything cross-threading. Once these inserts and the, the plastic intake start spinning, it's over. So for these, you can just kind of crisscross and tighten them up. Snug them down by hand so they're good. We can compress that gasket. Good to go. All right, at this point, because we don't need it out of the way anymore and don't want to forget it, let's go ahead and connect our, our canister purge. Just make sure you put the line on there straight so you don't ruin the O-ring. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Get it passed, lock it, a little tug, we're good to go. We'll do our aspirator and our PCV later. Let's concentrate on that upper radiator hose. All right, let's go ahead and bring it over. Now, like I said, I'm installing a completely new hose because there were some crusties back here around the molded connection and I want it to be leak free for this customer. But most of the time you just need to replace the O-ring inside of here and I'll link to everything down below. If you did put a new O-ring in there, make sure you put some uh, lubricant on there, make sure your clip is in place, and that just simply locks into here. Get it passed, get it on there nice and straight, and it does have orientation to it, so it won't just lock on anyway. See how it just popped in right there? A little more, a little wiggle, a little push, nice and straight, and you can see the lock popped, and make sure it's popped and set back in on both sides. A little tug, and we're good to go. Okay, now with everything back together, we're good to go. The last step is to fill the cooling system. What you wanna use is a 50-50 mix of coolant, but Ford doesn't make the oat coolant for these vehicles anymore. What they replaced it with is the new PO coolant, the yellow coolant, which is actually far superior anyway, so you might as well pick up a couple bottles of this and transfer over to the new yellow coolant now that the system is drained. So you're gonna fill it with a 50-50 mixture to the very top of this degas bottle, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna clean up the area, clean up your tools, and allow the system to naturally burp itself through these vent lines on here. Come back, check it, make sure it's at least above the cold fill line you see right here, and then you're good to go. You can go ahead and start the vehicle. Before you do that, make sure you put the cap back on until it clicks. Go ahead, start the vehicle up and start letting it run a little bit and check for leaks, of course, first thing. Make sure your belt to track and all that good stuff. And then you're gonna allow the vehicle to warm up, the engine to warm up. As it warms up and the thermostat opens, there's gonna be a huge burp of air coming through there and the level's gonna drop, okay? You're looking for that. At that point, once it drops on there, you wanna turn the engine off, okay? Come out here, you're gonna loosen the cap just a little bit and you're listening for a hiss. It's gonna hiss either way. Uh, but if it start hissing a lot, you want to just back away and, 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 and stop what you're doing because it's too pressurized and it's going to erupt out of here, okay? Allow it to cool off a little bit. And then you can come over here, safely pull your cap, and go ahead and fill it again. I do it about an inch above the cold fill line, okay? Then go ahead, put it back on. And then you can go ahead and let the engine run to full operating temperature. It's going to be filled enough at that point. Let the engine run a full operating temperature five, 10 minutes once it gets there. And then you're gonna rev the engine to 2,500 RPMs and hold it for 30 seconds. Come back off, let it go to idle. And you're gonna do it three, four times. What that's gonna do is gonna really keep a constant high flow rate of coolant, especially through these heater hoses right here, and flush out any air pockets that are in, that are trapped in the heater core. And there's going to be air in there. So you want to push it all out of there. It won't come out naturally and vent and burp. You need to push the air out through the other side. Okay, it's very, very important. 
do that. And then, of course, come back, check your level. If we're good to go, and we burped all the air out of there, we're getting heat out of the vents in there, you can go ahead and shut it down, let it cool off. And then once it cools off, you can come over here, release any pressure that's in there while the engine's cool, and do a final check and adjustment to your cold fill level. But that's all there is to it. It's a very simple job. It's right on top. Follow these tips and tricks, and you'll get it done, you know, literally within a half an hour, hour tops with cleanup and everything else. It's not that bad of a job. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.